Hi, I'm Chris and welcome to this second video in learning Symfony. So in the last video, we installed Linux and got our development environment set up. And in this video, we're going to be looking at actually installing Symfony. Uh, we're going to be doing that using Composer. Then we're going to set up our permissions, sort out how to actually look at the site that we've just created. Um, tweak the default config files and don't worry about that at this point. Uh, then we're going to set up look at the directory structure that's been set up for us, look at the default bundle that's been created, and again, don't worry about bundles or anything. All of this will be explained, and then we're going to look at cleaning up that install. Okay, so we're going to be doing everything from our Windows 7 PC, and we're going to be using our Ubuntu server in the background. We're going to be doing everything via PuTTY for this session, so I'm just going to log in. And if again, if you don't understand how any of this was set up, then please watch the first video as it explains it all. Okay, so we've got our web environment. Well, our Apache install is going to be looking at the this path. Um, to begin with, we're going to need to install Symfony. Now to do that, I'm just going to go to symfony.com. I'm going to look in the documentation and then in the view more and then installing make sure this is set up master version and then scroll down and it's this command here that we're actually after but we don't want the full command so I'm just going to copy that bit out and then we're going to do composer let's move this so you can see it and then just right click to paste that bit in and then this bit here is telling us, well, it's, it, it requires us to tell the command where we want to install Symfony to. So we're going to say var www.html, and then we're going to call it learn Symfony. And then we're going to put in our version number. Now, if we just go to this link, we can see that the actual most recent version is 2.33. And also there's this preferred dist option. So we're going to put that in as well. 2.3.3 and then prefer dist. Now this can take a while. Um, it depends on the speed of your internet connection and a few other factors. But I'm just going to pause the video because it will come to a point where it prompts us for some information. So I'll resume the video at that point. Hopefully it will... Uh, at least show something in a sec. Now I'm going to pause it. Just a very quick resume, just to show that this is the sort of expected output that you're going to get, and then it's going to scroll quite a lot of stuff here. It's just basically what this is doing is going off um, to the internet, so you need an active internet connection, and it's going to be downloading all the required packages for us, the basically the dependencies on installing Symfony. Don't worry about this if you don't fully understand what's happening, but basically this is like running an installer when you install Word or something like that. So uh, yeah, I'm going to pause it and I'm going to resume when it gets to the point where it's prompting us. Okay, so the first thing that it's asking us for is which database driver we're going to use and it's giving us a suggested default which we're going to accept. So we're not going to type anything in, we just press return. Then our database host, if you're using a different server or PC for your database, then you need to put the IP address in here. If it's running from the same box, then you can just accept the default. In our case, if you followed the tutorial in video one, then we just accept that default. Database port, again, we're just going to accept default. And our database name, uh, I don't think we've even got one created at this point, so we'll just accept the default there as well. Uh, in fact, we'll call this change me. So we know, and then our root user, uh, sorry, our database user, we're just going to use root, probably not advisable, uh, and a password, I think, uh, was lamp, I think. We'll soon find out. Uh, just accept. Again, it's pretty much just accepting the defaults, especially for the mailer, as we're not going to use that. Uh, locale, yeah, and yeah, we'll change that again. I don't really like doing that bit from command line. I'll show you where to change that in a sec. Well, once we've got the site set up. So if we do ls now, we can see we've got our Learn Symphony folder. And in there we've got 
basically all the default stuff that you would get when we install Symfony. Now, we can't actually access this site at the moment. To do that, we're going to need to set up the site in Apache. So we'll just come out of there. I'm seriously running low on RAM on this machine, so uh, if things take a little bit longer, then that's probably why. Uh, we'll just go to Apache, uh, etc, Apache 2, sites available. Right. So if you're unsure what I'm doing, basically I'm just changing directory to where we installed by default Apache on, um, Apache's the web server by the way if you're unsure, on Ubuntu and we need to go into this sites available directory because these are the, all the sites available, sites that Apache has available. Uh, when you first install it creates two by default, one called default, one default SSL. We're not going to worry about the default SSL and really we're not going to worry about default either but we need to copy that file. So we're going to do CP for copy and we're going to do default and we're going to put that to learn symphony. So effectively we're just copying that file to a new file called learn symphony. Or we're not as the case may be. LS just means list if you're not sure. Um, and then we need to do sudo by learn symphony. Okay. So first things we need to do is if we just press insert tab server name learn symphony.local press escape to stop that and move to where we need to be and insert ah. press escape and double D there press D twice to delete using by is such a pain in the ass, but you get used to it after a while um, I think it's I then let's press the I key and we'll just type from there W uh, var www html slash learn symphony and we want the web to be the default root yeah so press escape and then just highlight the W press X gets rid of that and again we just need to type it in here Right, that should be it, pretty sure. And then escape. Yeah, so escape, sorry, and then colon WQ to write and quit. It's sort of a bit archaic using by like that, but uh, as I say, it's just one of the things you get used to, I guess. If you're not sure, just go on Google and type in like Vi cheat sheet or something, and there'll be plenty of results telling you the right keys to press because it's basically a text editor without a mouse. Um, so what do we need to do then? We need to do sudo a to n site, which is basically Apache 2 enable site learn symphony. And it'll give us a command here to we've got to run. So sudo, let's right click. Excellent, that should now be available. And if you remember, we'll just go very quickly back into it by learn symphony. We've called it learn symphony.local. So uh, quit out of that queue an exclamation mark no save we do if config uh, probably won't work oh, there we go 192.168.116 so we need to do right click on notepad run as admin and then we need to basically put this into our host file so the path to that is windows system 32 driver i'll just go go back windows system32 drivers etc oh, and then do all files hosts and uh, that one needs to come out oh, I've already got one in there that might have been from when I was doing the previous tutorial series which I never really released 116 saves us a bit of time Right now, if we open up a browser and go to learn something we got local, no, that probably won't work. Yeah, 
So pretty much whenever you're dealing with Symfony, um, when you're in a development environment, you're going to be using this app underscore dev dot php and then whatever comes after that is part of your project um, when you're in the live environment you would actually hide this part and you would use the app php uh, let's see if we can find it. it's easier to show you yeah so you've got these two different files app and app underscore dev effectively as I say, we'll always use the app underscore dev and when you go into live, you would actually use the app. Uh, don't worry about that at this point. If it's something we'll cover later on, but just be aware of it. If you try and browse to the site without, well, at this point it's showing us it, but because there's no index or anything like that, it's just going to show us an empty, uh, an empty, sorry, it's going to show us the directory rather than try and actually load a file. Don't worry about that. Just click on app dev. And then again, it gives us this, uh, not allowed to access this file error. So that's something that we've got to fix. The easiest way to do that is just to, well, we need to create something on our computer where we can actually download our site to. And I'm just going to copy the whole lot. And this will take a while, so I'm just going to quickly pause. Okay, that seems to have uh, finished copying across so at this point we could just use a standard text editor and start editing that um, app dev file and put our IP address into there but we might as well do it using our IDE now I use uh, PHP storm you can download a demo of it from their website and I'm just gonna go through and set it up I'm just going to create a new project from existing files because we've already copied the files down to our um, computer. Um, we want to just say at the moment, I'll just say local directory and no web server configured. And that's going to be, uh, it shouldn't really be in there, should it? Let's create a file, sorry, create a directory called Learn Symphony. What I've done basically there by accident is just copied everything into this PHP dev folder. I don't really want that because effectively if you had more than one project on the go, you'd have to cre keep creating folders and that would be stupid. So I'm just going to put everything into that Learn Symphony folder inside PHP dev. Apologies if that's a little bit patronizing, but um, hey-ho. Right, create project from existing files. Uh, no web server. Right, and then we want to set that as our project root. Yeah, whatever, go for it. Yes, too many messages. Yes, accept, accept all the defaults, always default everything. Uh, right, so then what we can do, once we've got an idea like this, um, Aside from this being pretty cool and giving us like nice colorings and stuff so you can see all your code, uh, we can also use this to FTP so we don't really need to bother about FTP. So we're going to go to Tools and Deployment and Configuration. We need to add a new host. So it's going to call this 192.168.116. And there's 192.168.116. So I think one of the big things with Symphony really is it's such a ball ache to get it set up that it puts a lot of people off. But once you've got past this stage, it's actually really cool. Um, but it is just getting it set up is just, well, it's a bit of a nightmare. Right. And then we're just going to do that. Yes. Yes. I think that should work. Oh, we've got the wrong root path there. Uh, HTML Learn Symphony and I'll try that. Yes, very good. And one thing actually, sometimes you've got to tick this passive mode box. Um it depends. If you're having trouble, just try if you're having trouble when you do uh test and it, it won't work, just try ticking that passive box. 
anyway right so now we can also do tick automatic upload normally ask you for somewhere uh, it should be doing it yes very good right anyway we need to put in our IP address as we can't get in so what's our IP address 192.168.124 so just stick it in here uh, 2168.124 and then if you save it it automatically uploads it so as I say we don't really need that FTP anymore uh, right cool so we're in but I've forgotten to do the next part of this which is to set up the permissions so again we're just back on this installation page and scroll down and we need this bit so copy everything aside from that dollar sign and then just paste it in uh, but we want to go back to our web uh, w html learn symphony just paste it in and again the next one uh, they've kindly put in the sudo command there as well but if you're using like a different version of linux uh, set faculty not installed blah 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 right we have to solve that uh, well, you'll just see what I really do. So I don't actually know all this stuff. Uh, Ubuntu install Fackel. Just like you guys, really, at the end of the day. Still hit these problems, that'll probably be it. Now, this, this in itself is a bit of a nightmare as well. Um, it might just work, touch wood, but it probably won't. Oh, it did. Excellent. Sometimes you have to go in and like edit config files and all sorts, and that's when it gets totally horrible. And last one. Basically, what this is doing is giving a specific user permissions to the app cache directory, and Symphony heavily uses this. And you'll see at various points during the course, like that, we have to keep doing a command, which is php app console cache clear. And like those two commands there directly affect that anyway that's pretty much what this error message is saying it can't write to that folder but it should be able to now yeah cool so we're in what else do we need to do we've added our ip address to app underscore dev uh, we need to do some config stuff right so let's see what's been created by default so symphony uses like four different directories but pretty much you will mainly be working out of this one and occasionally out of doing little bits and pieces in these files in here but primarily you work out of the source directory and then in here you'll create your own um, bundle structure again don't worry about that at this point but by default when you first install um, you get one called the demo bundle and the, the vendor would be Acme um, I found this a little bit confusing when I first started using this. Uh, it creates all these different things in here. Effectively, um, like this is how your project will end up looking. But when you first start out and you look at it, you're like, "What the hell does any of that mean?" So don't don't feel bad because that's exactly how I was when I first started as well. And then uh, in here, you want to open up the config, and we need to put in the twig debug. Uh, twig debug. No, I'll just try that. Twig debug config YAML. Uh, let's see. We need to actually put something in. App config config. Yeah, twig debug. All right. Oh man, they don't make these things easy. So let's put this in. Unless we already have a services. Let's put that down the bottom so we know we've put it in. Yeah, so that should be good. What else is this guy saying? Mm, yeah, that should be good. Effectively what that's what that does is allow us to do um debugging inside Twig. Don't worry about it, just either copy and paste that in or just uh, type that in right so what else have we got in my highly professional tutorial series uh, looking at the directory structure right so 
uh, let's just close that down. So by default, as I say, Twig, uh, not Twig, what am I on about? Symphony installs like a, um, a test project that we can look at and we can see some stuff if I open it up. Man, this has gone downhill rapidly. Um, and we can see the demo. So we've got hello world demo, skewered area and the login page, but really at this point, it's gonna look at the hello world and you can change bits and pieces here, like hello Chris, and it updates. And the reason for that is because the second part here in the root, which is like, uh, not the root, but the root spelled like this, not like root user, it allows us to have a variable which is then passed to our um, controller action and which is then interpreted and passed through as a variable to our template. And I fully appreciate everything that I just said there probably just sounds like, huh? Like, what the hell are you talking about? Don't worry, these guys do it slightly differently to how I do it, but it, it is pretty straightforward once you get past it. So effectively, as I say, at this point, we've got an installed version of Symfony and I'm just gonna delete that Acme bundle because you don't need it. And I'm gonna clean that up. So where are we? Uh, I think it's app kernel. Yes, we get rid of that. Basically, we just wanna remove any references to that. And we need to, what else do we need to do? I think we remove it from routing. Yes, that needs to be removed. Right, so effectively that's pretty much everything that I set out to do at the start of this video. Um, so from now on, everything that we do will actually be good symphony stuff as opposed to just the first 40 minutes where we end up setting up a development environment. Uh, oh, last thing. I said all those things that when we were going through, um, you just accept the defaults and I put in a database name and stuff. That's where it goes. It goes into parameters YAML. And since Symphony 2.3, I think it was, they also inv included this distribution file. Um, don't worry about that at this point, but that was where, that's where those settings went. So anyway, apologies, the video was longer than I expected, but these things do take time when you're first setting up. So hopefully this has been pretty useful to you. And in the next video, we're actually going to start doing some, some cool stuff. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.